Hello there, my mavens here, and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix up this Oral-B Brawn toothbrush here, electric toothbrush, which is my wife's one. So, guaranteed this has not been opened before. She bought this brand new. I asked when, she reckons two-ish years ago, maybe it's longer, time does fly, and uh, it has been working perfectly. She took it away for a little work trip and basically then uh, she said, oh, by the way, my toothbrush has stopped working. She said it comes on for a few seconds and then just stops. And then when I tried it, when she got home, it did, it did that. But now it's not coming on at all. Yeah, you can see you can cycle through here. And also the sensitivity works. You know, it's supposed to change and flash at you to let you know you're brushing too hard. But yet there's no, uh, there's nothing out there. Now it's showing a full battery and when I charge it up, it is charging. But yet it's not, uh, it's not doing what it needs to do. So you can see that. So it's weird. If the battery failed, would it have failed so quickly? I would have thought it would have kind of got weaker and weaker and weaker, but it's just work then bang stopped so anyway it's going to be a tea break fix i'm hoping it's not going to be a nightmare uh -huh. go get yourself a drink i'm just drinking some orange juice and slurp slurp let's see if we can fix this over the next 10 or 15 minutes first thing i'm going to do is see if there's a way we can reset this well apparently you hold down the power button for 10 seconds here we go holding it down now it's supposed to double blink at you to let you know it's been reset. To save any confusion, it's not a tea break fix. There was too much footage in here, so it's turned into a trying to fix video. But I hope you enjoy your drink anyway. I can't see this would have. Uh, this is going to fix it. I'm thinking battery problem. There we go. Did you see that? Excellent. So it does actually reset. That could be a no waffling vid. Right. Okay. Let's uh, now see. Is it working? No, it's not. I wonder, is it seized up rather than the battery gone? It doesn't seem old enough to have the battery gone. Right, let's uh, get some pliers. We need to get the bottom bit off here. Hold on, one second. What's this in here? It doesn't seem to be a screw or anything in there. Oh, wow, we've just gone all the way through. What? Is that a drainage thing there? To allow any liquid to come out, can you see now? Or have I just pierced it through? I didn't go hard on it, but maybe the plastic's rotted a little bit. I wonder if that's some sort of drainage thing. Right, so basically I need to squeeze here and order, uh, get a little pry tool to try to pop this off here. Now, probably will be a little bit destructive, but right now it's not working. So, I can't make it any worse. There we go, I've got a gap here now. Now, this is gonna be disgusting, this is real life. It, uh, it hasn't been opened up before, so I'm sure there's going to be mould of all sorts in here. There we go, that wasn't bad at all. Result. That came apart very nicely. And I don't think I've caused any damage. And yeah, that is uh, that does go right the way through. So, yeah, look at that, it goes right the way through there. So I presume that is some sort of drainage. Now, right, springs come out. Now normally, I think you have to then take this off and then force it down through. So, I'm gonna use a little bit of hot air, just at 100 degrees Celsius, just to warm up the area, it might make it a little bit more pliable. Well, I did heat it up for a few minutes, but it didn't seem to make any difference at all. I didn't want to cause damage to the rubber seal, because then if I can fix it and put it back together, then it's not going to be watertight at all. So what I'm going to do use now is just brute strength. I'm just going to get some pliers out so I don't damage my mat, and I'm just going to use force to press down, and hopefully by pressing down, it will then eject the insides out of it. Let's uh, put it on this so I don't damage my mat. There we go, okay. I think that's a better way of doing it because then you don't have to worry about trying to, you, you might end up making this not waterproof if you were to fix it, you know, with all the prying. So it is charging, but the battery's not holding any charge, which says to me, maybe the battery is low. Let's measure the battery and see what's measuring. Because if it's fully charged, it should be like four point, about 4.2. 
So I can see the points go up to here. And it must be this one here. 3.9, so that battery's got charge in, so it's not going to be a battery issue, unless the battery hasn't got enough oomph behind it. Let's see what's happening here with the motor. Well, that's not seized. Well, let's see if there's any, hold on. It wants to go that way, but it's not going. Right, so the motor should be these two things here, I think. So let's see if we get in voltage to the motor. No, so let's turn that off. Is that any different, whether it's on or off? Right, that's off. Turn it on. Yeah, it does go up, doesn't it? And turn it off. It goes down, but we're not getting enough voltage at the back, uh, at the motor. Why is that? So that's why it's not working. There's no power on that motor. Let's zoom in on the board and see what's going on. I'm just going to clean up this mess. So we know the button's working. We know the lights are working. Coming down here. We know the selection button's working, so it's nothing to do with that. Can I take this thing off easily, I wonder? I think this has got the same problem with the one that was sent in to me, but the one that was sent in, in, in to me, I blew because I attached it to my bench power supply when it was on, off, turned it on, and I had a big spike, and I think that blew one of the, one of the chips. This must be quite a common problem. Well, what we could do is we could get the fleur cam out just to see if there's anything heating up. Might give us an indication. If one of the chips is getting warm, maybe it's draining power away and then there's not enough power getting to the motor. Right, I love this just because it just works so quickly. I haven't got it connected to my phone or do anything like that. Problem is, is the resolution is just awful. Right, so we're gonna turn it on now. So it should be working right now, shouldn't it? Oh, 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 look at that. Yes, we've got something warm. Oh my word, I never have a flur cam fix. Something here, something here is getting very, very warm. That looks to be the middle of it here. Right, what are you? Turn yourself off. Does the heat go away when I turn it off? Is the heat easing away from that? Let's just turn it on one more time, see if it glows. Yes, it does. Oh, isn't that a lovely sight? Right, let's see what is in the middle there. Let's zoom in. Amazing. Oh my word, I never have a fur cam fix. I think it's this. Hard to see with the light in the way. Does it look burnt or anything? Do you know what? I think this might be a job for isopropyl alcohol. So let's uh, balance that just there. I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol and then we'll see. We'll physically be able to see with our eyes rather than the blurriness of the blur fur cam what's happening. Uh, this is going to be a good one. Unless, of course, that heat is normal, but I don't think so. Right, you ready? I'm gonna turn it on, no, let's put it on first. So, now let's turn it on. Oh, didn't turn it on, hold on. Oh, interesting, it's not turning on now. Why are you not turning on now? That's weird. Oh no. That's annoying. This is what happened the last time. It just all of a sudden, everything went completely dead. No way. Hold on though. I haven't done anything to make it dead. I had the Fleur cam on it. Oh no. That's so annoying because I'm not gonna be able to, you know, I was 
I'm trying to prove the fault there. That's worrying. Right, let's plug it in and see if it's going to start charging. Oh, we've got some weird thing happening here. Look at that. Can you see that? It's not happy. Hmm. So maybe if it was turned on a few more times in its case, it would have also just completely went dead. I suppose I'm lucky that I got the flare cam to even pick something up. Just holding it down for 10 seconds again. No, it is completely and utterly dead. That's worrying. No. Let's see if we've still got voltage in the battery. Yeah, 3.9 volts. Now it's going to motor. Nah, it doesn't make a difference now. Right, okay, well, let's look closely in that area, see if we can work out what's what. So, what is this thing here? Is it some current sense resistor? Is it a fuse? Maybe it's a fuse. working. Got continuity through it. But not through there. Is that supposed to be a fuse? Maybe it was this that was burning up. Well, if it's getting to here, the thing is I don't know it's a fuse, do I? It just says E. I don't know what E means. Where does this go to? Right, okay. Hmm. I'm going to see if I can find the other one that was sent in, because I think it was the same model. Right, this is the one I couldn't fix before, and this is also a 3771. So we are... It's the, it's the same. Now, where's my uh, pliers gone? Yeah, it's also labelled up as E, isn't it? Let's see if we've got continuity through it. So we've got continuity through here. No. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe that is what was wrong with this one. I didn't find out what the fault was. Oh no, I thought I was going to be able to fix it. Now, I know I'm not going to be able to fix it because obviously I don't know what this component is. Imagine if the same problem was on both of them. So now, should that have continuity through it or not? Or is it going to be acting more like a uh, some sort of weird capacitor? I mean, it looks like it should have continuity through it. Let's go on to the, the negative here of the battery and see if we have anything this side or that side. No. Let me get an ohm reading through it. Now it's completely open. It's completely open. So I don't think it was this that was getting hot on uh, on this one here. I think it was this that was getting hot. But has that draw got so hot that it then blew this. I'm tempted to run just a tiny wire across that and see if it comes to life. But I think it's something else which has caused that to blow because why would it blow? And the reason we weren't getting power to, the, to here because we were getting a certain amount is because all the energy was going through this component. That was heating up a lot. And you could see it was burning bright, wasn't it? One second, let me just make sure my tweezers are conductive. Yeah, so I'm going to short that fuse and see if it springs to life. So I'm going to cross it now. 
No. But I have done lots of other things to this one here. That's still not coming to life. Right, let me try it on this one here because I haven't messed with this one yet. Ready? Yes, okay, that go. Right, so that suggests that that is a fuse then, but did you see it still didn't actually turn on? So that isn't the problem, the fuse has now blown. The fuse has now blown. Now this is dodgy because if I run a wire across that, the next thing to blow will be a component. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's check for voltage either side of the fuse. So we're here and the right hand side of the fuse. So we've got this drop in. We did have voltage there and then it dropped. Why is it dropping? Let's go this side of the fuse. Ah, so the voltage is this side, 3.9. What's happening here? 3.9, 3.9, 3.9. But then this side, we've got nothing. Hence the reason it's not working. Now, should we see if we've got some weird short? Mind you, the battery's connected, isn't it? But let's just do it on ohms. Let's go to this side. No. It is in circuit at the moment though, isn't it? I'm wondering if we should disconnect the battery from it. And then we might find out that there's some kind of short around here. We might be able to, there might be a short somewhere, you know, that's causing this. I'm going to heat up this battery terminal here. I'm going to try to pull away the positive from it. Let's just make sure that that definitely is the positive. So we now know that this is the positive on the left hand side because, you know, it's reading correctly. So let's pull away that bottom bit. And then maybe, it, then you never know, it might be a shorted capacitor or something. But I'm not going to be able to find that when I've got power rushing through it. I'm just going to try to just really manhandle that down. There we go, we're away. Right, so you can see now that that is disconnected from the board. And let's measure again. We should have nothing now on the board. No, excellent. Right, let's just go on to continuity for a moment and we'll just go across different capacitors, see if we've got any shorts. I'll, I'll go across, let me just go across that fuse here as well. There's no, no shorts there. Right, short here. Ooh, unless it's not a uh, capacitor, we'll zoom in in a minute. What else we got? Well, the only thing I can see is this thing here. Yeah, eight ohm short. Let's zoom in, see what that is. That could be completely normal. So it's this one here. Eight ohm, and it's going between here. Ah, oh, is that just measuring? That's just measuring the coil, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure that's just measuring the coil. So if I was to go across the coil, I think the charging coil at the bottom here is going to be 8 ohms. So let's have a little look here. Yeah, that goes up to here, doesn't it? Four ohms, hold on. Right, that's currently four ohms, so it should be four ohms here. Yeah, four ohms. Yeah, that, that capacitor isn't faulty. That's the coil that we're measuring. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. The only thing we've seen heating up was this thing here. So I'm gonna swap out this one for the other one. 
and then uh, put a little bit of wire between here and here. I mean, what else could it be? Now, I don't really want to use heat because it's going to be right above the battery, so I'm going to get some low melt solder and I'm going to try to take it off that way. This would be so much easier if I could use hot air, it's just far too close to the battery just underneath. And having to unsolder all the board, all the contacts for the battery and all the rest, there's too much work involved. So that's where low melt solder will come in useful. What we'll do now, I'll shout out my mate Vince Massive, the members of this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeeps.com, DJVG, Pixie, Anthony Dean, Baza2, Russ Mellinson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Soul Reaver555, The My Mavens Fan Club, Astral Red Panda, Shamza Al Sawadi, and last but not least, Sholo Bradford Blackmore. So many thanks to each and every one of you. That's weird, the actual PPs are in, done in metal. Nice. It's not painted on, you know, I've soldered the PPs. Not weird. Strange. These are well worth fixing because from memory I think they were over a hundred pounds. Let's see, are we getting any resistance reading through this? Yeah, we are. 0.62. So that's a complete and utter short through there. Right, let's take the one off the other one, just in case it's reading different. Right, let's see if this one is reading the same. Wow, it's really raining at the moment. I was considering going down to the car today. Whoa! Proper torrential. Oh, it's hailstoning. It's always exciting to see a few hailstones. It's eased off now. Right, let's see, is this the same? No. Oh, interesting. It's not the same. Maybe that's why it was burning up, because it's wanting to see 23 ohms, and what we had here was a, com a complete short. It might be fixable. Haven't got a fuse though, have I? Oh, what? Why are you playing silly games with me? That was definitely, oh, is it to do with heat? When you heat it up, does it change resistance? 28 ohms, they're the same. It's to do with heat, isn't it? Whoa, that's 90, what's going on? All I've done is turn it around. Whoa, 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 hold on. Right. My leads are three ohms. Why is it varying so much? Hmm, to me it looks like they're both faulty. Weird, and then it goes completely open. Let's see if that will do the same. Oh man, this is so, so strange. Is this now gonna go open like it did a minute ago? Well, they are reading different. I've got my leads firmly on there. Right, okay. 
That is the one with the solder on, so this is my wife's one. Let's put that to one side, just in case it's acting, acting weird. I mean, we had a heat spot on it. Let's put this one on here, and let's just bridge up the fuse and uh, see if things start coming to life. I can't see how that would cause it, but it's some, something's caused that to get warm. That's so strange. As far as I know, a fuse is just a tiny bit of wire going from one side to another, and the thinner the wire, the lower current, the lower amps it can take. So even in SMD format, it can't be much different. Now, I know there are things like resettable fuses, unless there's PP fuses, some resettable one, some kind of thermal one, but I don't think so. I mean, we seen there was a huge amount of heat earlier on it, and it's still conducting through. So why with my multimeter is it varying so much? If you could put that down in the comments below, because a fuse should just be, even if the wire was super thin or super fat, super thick, it should still have a complete short going through it. So on my meter, it should be whatever my leads are measuring. In this case here, it looked like my leads were three ohms. So the fuse should be three ohms. So if you could pop down in the comments below what is happening here, because it's really weird that they were both acting strange. Unless of course, they're both faulty. It's amazing how hard it is to get a nice finish when you don't use hot air. But anyway, although it doesn't look great, the PP fuse is in place. Now this E component thing, I'm going to be bridging with a tiny bit of wire. I know it's not fusible wire, but I'm using 0.02 millimeter, which is tiny. So 50 of them can fit into one millimeter. So I'm hoping that if there is a heat spot, a heat thing being drawn here, that maybe the wire will burn before a component because it has to be acting more like a fuse than if I'd use some thick telephone 0.5 millimeter diameter wire. This stuff is tiny, as you can see, or probably can't see. Okay, have we got a short now? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so now let's see, is it gonna come alive and is it gonna blow up? As we go through the different settings. Right, now I'm going to do the same again, but with the fleur cam. I'll hold the fleur cam with one hand. I mean, is this getting warm now? See, it did blow when I put IPA on it, but I wouldn't have thought that would have made a difference. Do you know what? I'm going to ask the question. I'm slightly embarrassed to ask, but ages ago when I was starting out, I was always told that IPA is safe to use, and I know it's safe to use, but then I was told quite rudely that I was clueless did I not know that IPA is conductive. And now when I put that on there, the IPA, when we, we went to see, remember then it just didn't stop it stopped working because I wanted to see something heating up. So I'm going to ask the question that other people are probably embarrassed to ask. Is IPA conductive? Yes or no? I would say no, because I'm always using it, I don't have a problem. But when I went across here then, it did seem to blow straight away, didn't it? So if you could put it down into the comment section. After all, this channel is about learning, so I don't want to make out that I know stuff when I clearly don't. And if I'm thinking that, there will be other people that will think the same as well. Right, so let's see now, are you going to get red hot? No, you're not. It was a faulty fuse. I mean, it is getting warm there but it's not glowing. Remember when my finger was in it before, it was as hot as my finger, and now it's not. So now the question is, I know that looks warm, but look at my finger, when my finger's in it, it's not, you see. So the question is, what do I replace that component with? 
Oh, it didn't like that, did it? Why did it do that? Is it starting to have problems? Let's keep the flare cam on a minute. I'll tell you what, let's see if it works like this. Yeah. I mean, that's going to put it under lots of strain when you do that, isn't it? Oh, it's every 15 seconds it will do that to tell you to change sides. Sorry, that's not a fault. Well, I don't think that's burning up like it was at the beginning of the video. So it looks like the fuse was the problem. So it looks like the original problem with this was the PP fuse, because that was the one that was burning up. But somehow, when I added isopropyl alcohol to the board, the secondary fuse with E on it has decided to give up the ghost. I've changed the PP fuse, and now we have life once I've bridged the E fuse, but I can't take the E fuse from my other faulty toothbrush because that one's also blown there. So I need to turn to Google to find out what an E fuse is. Right, well it looks like an E fuse is a very low rating. So can you see here, it's 0.375 amps. So 375 milliamps. That's going by this table. Mm. Now I looked up the Nintendo Switch one and somebody said it's fine to replace it, I think, because I thought I could take one off the, you know, above the USB-C port, but they said it's fine to use a two or three amp fuse. So that's a lot more than, than uh, this one here. But I'm thinking, does it, I mean, I suppose if the same problem happens again and it was to draw too much, the worst, I mean, I don't think anything's going to go up in flames if I was to use a 1.5 amp one. I think, I mean, clearly, if you're going to buy one, buy a proper one. Could you let me know, is that correct? Do I need to buy a 0.375 amp fuse for it? I'm going to put this one in for the moment, 1.5 amp. So that's uh, FF0226. This is with uh, CPC. So I'm going to be using one of these. They are only 8p each, excluding that. So you're going to be looking at about 10p for one of them. Uh, obviously, the rating here is way too high. This is 1.5 amps. So it's about four times too high. But uh, I'm thinking that the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to blow the electronics like this chip rather than would the battery be affected by that i'm thinking not i'm going to put it in but clearly do not copy what you see in my videos because this is not going to be the correct fuse to put in but i can't use the one from the other toothbrush because that one's blown as well so let's unsolder this pop one of these tiny ones in and then uh, hopefully this will live again for a while so that's it, I'm just soldering in one of the fuses, but what I'm gonna do is, this fuse I'm putting in is a K fuse. It's really interesting now, I never knew that, that for example, a B fuse is rated less than a D fuse, which is less rated less than an E fuse or a K fuse. I'm gonna buy up the whole range of fuses because they're not gonna cost a huge amount from CPC. And then I'm gonna have them here as spares because then even if I'm working on, let's say something like a Nintendo Switch, if I find that it should be a three amp fuse, I can just look at the table and then be like, oh, a three amp fuse is a whatever it's gonna be, like for example, a J fuse or something like that. I'm not saying it is, I just made that up off the top of my head. But it is interesting then on another device, if it doesn't need much amperage, then maybe you would be putting in something like a B fuse. So uh, yeah, really, really interesting. So I'm gonna be just, uh, yeah, popping that in and then closing it all up and hopefully this will be job done. So the original problem here was that the PP fuse had failed for whatever reason, it was burning itself up. And somehow when I added isopropyl alcohol to the board, then I, uh, it was weird, it, it just, just seemed to blow the E fuse, but maybe that was just coincidence. I just wanna show you a quick little experiment I'm gonna do with a cap full of isopropyl alcohol and a cap full of water, because then that will answer the query that I had earlier in the video, which is, is isopropyl alcohol conductive or not? Is it possible that it can conduct across very, very, very small gaps? Can you see there? Look, we have got a reading, haven't we? Look at that, I think that answers my question. And the further I put it apart, the bigger, the uh, the higher the resistance. So look at that. So although the person said it in a nasty way, 
I think they were actually being helpful. Look, can you see, we have got... We have, haven't we? Right, now I'm going to get a cup of water and see, well, a lid of water, in fact, I'll use the IPA lid of water and see if we've got the same reading. Right, so this is water. Now, let's see. Get this out of the way. Water's even more conductive. Can you see there? 4.6. So water is even more conductive. So that's 0 0.5. And the same distance is around 10. Interesting. Oh well, okay, so yeah, water is more conductive. Nice little experiment there. Nicely sidetracked there, Vince. Anyway, I'm going to put this all back together now, cleaning as I go along, so hopefully I'll be able to get rid of some of the black mould from the bottom and also some of the encrusted in toothpaste that's worked its way around the top. And then I'm thinking this will be hopefully working fine for at least another while to come. I'm not sure if the PP fuse that I put in is going to last the test of time because remember it came out of an already faulty toothbrush, but it's no problem because I'm going to buy a whole range of them from CPC and then when they arrive, the PP fuse is a three amp fuse and the E fuse is a 0.375 amp fuse so they're going to be easy enough to change out and then this expensive device will hopefully keep working because these are expensive devices and they are well worth fixing especially when you're probably only going to have spent about one pounds worth of fuses fixing them so yeah quite interesting why it failed I presume vibration and stuff might have just i don't know i don't know what made that fuse burn up if you know put it down in the comments below anyway let's finish up this video well there we go it was a tougher fix than i thought but i'm very happy with the end result my wife was using this last night she's put a new head on it and it is all working just fine she actually keeps it on the feather setting here so uh that's set in there so hopefully it will keep on working for a long time to come but after editing up the video, I know there's something wrong with that PP fuse. It makes sense now. Why would it keep varying on the multimeter like that? So when my fuses arrive from CPC, a 3 amp fuse and also an E fuse, a 0.375 amp one, I'm going to put them in here and then hopefully this will properly keep on working. While I think if I left that fuse in here, clearly it's working now, but the fact that it was having such variable readings on the multimeter, I think that's due to fail soon. So if you have one of these older Oral-B Braun toothbrushes here, maybe check out that PP Fuse and you might well find that your one is faulty, just like this one here. Still not sure why the E-Fuse broke, really weird, but clearly it was something that I did. So uh, yeah, right now this is working, but when the new fuses arrive, I put it in, then I think it will be working the same as it did when it left the factory, which is what I want. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Now, since filming was done here, I had to basically put the rubber seal back under the head of the toothbrush. So I should have taken more time to heat up that plastic ring at the top and take it off because when I put it back together, it was very hard to get the rubber seal back under where it should be. It's fine, I managed to do it, but maybe if you were to take the plastic ring off to begin with, then the toothbrush would just slot back up, put the plastic ring down, and it's gonna make a nice seal. Well, I had to kind of prise the rubber underneath the plastic head. It's fine, it's not gonna be water damaged. My wife only used this once when it was in that condition there, but now it's all tucked away underneath, so it's nice. Now, also, since filming, I found a video which is really helpful. It's done by Let's Fix It Garage. I subscribe to him years ago when I was fixing another toothbrush but he hasn't been recommended to me since which is just classic YouTube and basically he's done a great video on this and the big PP fuse is the fuse for the motors and the little fuse with the E on it is the fuse for the actual circuit board on the toothbrush itself, you know, to feed the chips and stuff so you can select what different setting you want. 
So yeah, really interesting that that's why there's two fuses on here. Interestingly, on his comments section, there must be over a hundred comments saying that people have fixed it simply by pressing down on the PP fuse and it started to work again. Now, we know it's not like a resettable little button on there. So I think what they're doing is vibrations must have caused the fuse to fail and by then putting pressure down on it, because they're not lying, enough people have said it that it must be true. By then putting pressure on it down, I think they're internally making the connection again inside the fuse. But I suppose with a bit of vibration over time, I'm sure it will break again so it looks like the pp fuse is a bit of a weak link on these this particular type of toothbrush and it needs to be replaced with what looks to be a three amp fuse but yeah check out let's fix it garage he's got a really interesting video on this uh toothbrush here and you're going to learn more about it watching his video than my video if i'd watched this first i would have been able to fix this probably straight away by just resoldering that pp fuse or just changing it out but saying that i wouldn't have learned then about what e means on top of the other fuse and now i know what that letter means that will hopefully stay with me for Ever. So uh, it's always good sometimes to struggle along yourself because if you just learn by copying someone else, you don't really take it in. While if you struggle with something and then work out something for yourself, often you'll remember that for life, which is more important. But I appreciate it probably makes for a slightly more boring video when it's taken me like a good 40 minutes to uh, waffle through fixing something which is essentially a broken fuse. But uh, there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.